Welcome to another episode of OS First Timer. In this episode, Diana will be trying out Cylon Linux 12.04, most likely released in 2012. Cylon Linux 12.04 appears to be based off Ubuntu 12.04 and uses a classic GNOME desktop. It has many Compeers animations installed by default and requires a processor running at 1.8 GHz or more for smooth performance. As of early 2013, Cylon Linux has no Wikipedia article and is quite unknown. Universal USB installer does not have this system listed, however by choosing Try Unlisted Linux ISO, I was able to create a live USB. So what are you just thinking of this interface so far? This is the default interface that it comes with when you... But you can obviously change it a lot. <laughs> I like it the way it is actually, it's quite attractive. Okay, so the background and the way everything is um, arranged on the desktop too. Okay, great. What time is it? Uh, Two forty-three in the afternoon on s on a Sunday afternoon, but it's pretty dark outside. Yeah. <laughs> Write, save, and open a text document. Let's have a look. I wonder if it's in applications. Wow, <laughs> that's quite a abrupt. Yeah. A grand. It's like. Um, <laughs> A grand introduction to the <laughs> menu now. Games. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's quite funny. Office. Okay, I'm assuming it would be in there. Some of the earlier operating systems I tried out. I know that Libra Office. There we go. So what do you want? I want a text document. Like yep. a Windows Word. Creating the doc, and I'm going to now save it. And Where do you want to save it to first? I'm going to save it to the desk Great. desktop. Okay, so can you quit the program? Well, it's got the things on this yep. side as X. opposed to that side. Yeah, I know. You, you try no, no, I'm saying, do you like how it's got an X? And yeah, it does. Great. Where's the file? Well, it would have to be on the desktop, right there, and I've just... Now, was that easy? What do you notice about the way it opened? <laughs> it d did a little spin. It's like an acrobat. <laughs> on first impressions, the operating system seems to be trying to impress you, and it, everything's very dramatic, and here we go. And what if I told you that you can change all of those animations to whatever you want? If you wanted a program to close, like, for example, close it. Yeah. You could make, for example, with that fire animation, you could make it burn up to close. Or you could make it explode into everywhere, into 3D pieces. You can change that to whatever you want, every single thing. Um, that would be a novelty. Yeah. What is 198 divided by 4? So where would you expect to find a calculator? Well, I actually remember it, seeing it, when I was looking at LibreOffice. Oh, no, the calc is... Oh, that's an Excel spreadsheet, yeah. is it? So where in Windows or another operating system is a calculator? I would actually. assume in accessories. So is a fire annoying or does it is it okay? I think after a while it might get annoying, but at the moment I like it still. Okay, so 198 divided by four. What do you think the answer is, by the way? 42. Four. 49.5. <laughs> You usually always try and make the answers 42. Now that's just giving you a thing, it's saying do you want to back up your files regularly, so this is in case something goes wrong, it's giving you a warning now, do you want to back up your files every now and then? Just say no, don't worry, because it's a live USB, you don't really need to worry. Okay, and you can quit calculator. Oh, minimise it, try minimising, see what happens. Oh, it got sucked up. And where, how would oh, you unminimise it? It's got an actual Mac. Little it's got a Mac, it's got a dock at the bottom. Yeah, it does. Okay. So unminimize it now, like bring it back up. Great. It spits it out. And shake the window around. Oh, don't tell me. Oh. Wobbly no. windows. Hanging out the washer. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. And you what come across there? another feature. It just spun round. <laughs> now, where did the clock go? Um. Wait a sec. Now, what you've done is this operating system is on a cube, okay? Right. So if you hold down Alt Control and then try and drag the desktop across. Now move it around. Oh my god. There it is. 
your programs over there, the calculator. See it? Oh yeah, I do. What did you think of that? I can't see how I would use that. Well, let's say you were doing some calculations. Um, you had Firefox open. Notice it's installed by default. The default search engine for Firefox is this one, and basically you save trees when you Google search. Why, when you why isn't Google the default thing on Firefox? Well. You could if you wanted come up here. I thought they went hand in hand. And obviously go Google or Yahoo or choose oh, whatever one okay. you wanted. Yeah. So you could change it to Google. But then you could change your homepage to Google. Right. And look, everything is fire. Yeah. Every menu possible is a fire menu. But anyway, this is basically, they have this to save trees. So every time you do a search, five cents goes to donating to save trees. Oh, well, that's a good cause. Yeah, so that's... Like, That's why use right, Google yeah. when you can save the world <laughs> by I searching? Think, I don't think saving the world is, you know... Saving well, saving trees, trees, but how? Have a little look at this. That's how much money they've raised, just for people searching. That's pretty good, actually. Yeah, they do it th through ads and stuff. Anyway, enough of that. Your next task is to customise the look of the computer. Okay, well I'm going to right click and see yeah. what happens. Notice even it's fire on the desktop. Every yeah. drop down menu has that. Oh, change desktop background. Here yeah. we go. Oh, wow, this and is it's got pretty quite cool. a lot. I like the way it you know, spins around, gets sucked everything. up, spat out. The whole even desktop rotates. Okay, let's do a little test. Does it look better than XP? I think it's got a lot of neat features that XP doesn't have. Does it look better than XP? At the moment, it actually looks pretty good. Does it look better than Vista and 7? Remember, Windows 7 has transparency. And what does this mm. have? Transparency. It does, doesn't it? So it's very all similar to Vista in, in that aspect. I personally prefer the look at the Windows 7 and Vista transparency, but that's, that's up to you. Let's have a look here. Notice what the scroll bar does. To save space, instead of being a big thing, it only pops when you move it, so yeah, yeah, it so. hides it in yeah. a way. But I still, see. you can kind of see the little I one. Understand. Birds there we in the go. Sky. That's very pretty. That one. And right. I like the way when you click on it, it just, just instantly. instantly and, it, and it was actually a fade too. Yeah, as opposed to uh, having to apply it. Okay, well, let me show you something on the desktop cube, which I was going to show you before. So let's open a few programs. Just, just yeah. out of curiosity, can you get move those somewhere to the side rather than being in the middle? So you don't like them there? No. They even do this funny Wobbly ball thing. thing. Just uh, actually, no, put it in the corner there because I'm used okay. to the time down there. There. And I never know, need to know about CPU use. So, how would you so get rid of that? Get rid of that. Well, you should be doing this, not asking me. You so, you right can choose the size, the theme. Delete this ring sensors. Gone. Oh, good. And what's this? Some device, some. Things not found. Oh well, we don't need to know about. And you can delete that. All these desktop widgets. There's a bunch. It's like the oh, desktop just... gadget. Now, how does that ha happen? What actually happens is if you grab this and you put it across, you can actually drag it between desktops. Oh, okay. We'll put it on the other desktop because we don't need. You don't it want on it this on this one. one. No. So, well, there's there's a purpose for you. If you don't want something, just put you it can over put there. Put it on the other desktop. <laughs> yeah. Now go back to the. Oh, that one, yeah, because it's got the calculator on it. Yeah. And I just want to show you how amazing it looks like if you've got a bunch of programs open. Let's just say we had a PlayStation emulator. Did that come with it? Yep. Oh. Everything came with it. Um, a Stellarism, which you can look at the stars and stuff with it. How do you look at the stars with it, though? Is this hooked up to some Can you um, now space? rotate the desktop? Now, there we go. See how you can even see the programs? You can see this program's in front. And you can see you those can see the two other two underneath. there. Can you try Alt F4? Because I think that's how we... Ah, oh, there oh. we go. That's how you can escape a program full screen. It's just like Windows. Anyway, let's say you're working on your stuff. I could then flick work on my stuff. Or if you want to do a bunch of web browsing here and a bunch of Word stuff on that other mm. desktop, you, you know, know what, you can split you know it up like that. You know what designers should do? Yeah. Hardware designers who create this screen yeah. thing should, on the other side of the... Yeah screen have an, like another screen rather than the back of it and therefore you can sit on that side and work on well what you could do is you could get 
multiple monitors, put one on this side and then one on the other side, and then when you flick the screen it would actually flick and you'd see the other side of the cube on that screen. You could have four screens and actually flick through them if you wanted to. But why not, rather than having four screens, why not just have well, rather than four, have just the one screen with the back on it, and that, therefore you could at least flick between two. But who's going to be sitting over there? I don't know. You know, if not necessarily in this room where there's a wall behind it, but yeah. in an office situation, to save money on purchasing these and save desk space because... Oh, uh, yeah, but then there would be two people using the same computer, even though it would be different stuff. That means the computer would work slightly slower. You'd need a more powerful computer for two people to use at once, no. but that's okay. They've got servers and stuff like that, so that practically happens anyway. The next thing is to, uh, well, I was going to say explore the system yourself, but I'll give you something to do. Go to the software center where you would get new software for this operating system because all of this stuff pre-installed you can get well, a lot more I wonder if it's at a place downloads? I wonder. no it's not oh, the okay. software center is an application oh, okay. so it's almost like an app store and I'll give you a clue this system is based off Ubuntu <laughs> it's funny it going mm. hysterical on the side there okay well Ubuntu software center yep. So everything compatible with Ubuntu is compatible with this. Yeah. And there it is. Now, I want you to get, uh, just as an example of seeing if you can install something, go into the category section and get a game and a puzzle type game. So a, a game that is a puzzle genre. Okay, puzzle. So those are just uncategorized. Oh, I see. Puzzle, yep. Now, I'll, I'll just get one for you and I'll tell you to install it. I'll show you something actually with a price here. Look on the side. Yeah. There's very rare few that cost money. See, $4. Oh, I see. You see, what they do, they sometimes get money. So let's say you wanted to install this one. Oh. Flippy. How would you do it? Flipple. Flipple. Um, install. Okay, so you click on it and install. Click install, then what happens? How do you know it's installing? The line, the bar there. A indicate. progress bar, yeah, process bar, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Tell you what, I actually really like this operating system. I can't actually see a fault with it at all. It's very easy to use. Things are in logical places. When you're, you know, wanting to do something, there's not a lot of searching to do it. You yeah. just do it. And this has an app store like Windows. Yeah. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna, because people are gonna complain if I don't say this. Find the application while I'm talking, by the way, where it would be installed on your computer now. Yeah. Windows 7 doesn't have an app store, so if you want software, you have to go online and find it and stuff like that. Windows 8 has an app store, so this kind of app store you're seeing, that's in Windows 8. You can actually browse apps like that in Windows 8 and just click install and it install straight away. Now. I'll give you a clue. It's in the applications menu. Okay. I thought it would have been, but I was yeah. just having a look. Just in case. You can add things are. to that. Yeah. So what was it? It was a game. Oh, and they put and it in the game. And there it is. Oh, and it automatically okay. put it in the right thing for you it and everything. It did, didn't it? Now, let's, let me just give you an example here and just see if you can run this. First level. See if you can do two. Just as a little example, use the arrow keys and you've got to fold that whole thing up and you're currently the blue thing. Oh, one no. press, one, two, three. Okay. You did it. See if you can do level two and then you can finish up. This is just an example of you want something, you go get it. Is that easy? Yeah. There we go. And then it just gets really ultra hard eventually with these massive crazy shapes and you've got to take certain routes and stuff like that but that's just an example and that's free and but it wouldn't just be games you could get web browsers graphics design programs all this stuff yeah and with Ubuntu or systems like this it is pretty much always free and what were you going to say about the Windows or Windows 8 it has an app store Okay. So Windows 7 doesn't have one Windows XP doesn't have one Windows 8 has an app store just like that we can go and you can get these programs are there a lot that are for free or...? It's more of a you pay for it situation rather than a you get it for free situation. In Debian or Debian or... I, However I, looked, I looked at reviews online, copied what they said and I got in trouble for doing what they said and people are saying it's like Debian. I, like, I don't know how to say it anymore. Debian. It's Debian. Or, well, the guy's wife who made Debian was like, he was Debbie and the system's name is based off Debbie. So oh. Debian. Yeah. Debian. 
I don't know. Doesn't but anyway, Dabeen is really, it's free stuff and everything's free. Ubuntu is kind of, most things free, but then a little odd costing mm. every here and there. Oh. And this is a free one. What's free? This operating system. The, well, Linux is pretty much always free, yeah. except for like Zoron Pro and stuff like that. Now, another thing is, let's say you don't know where an application is, right? And you're like, oh, how do I... Oh, yeah, where's the searching thing? Does this have a search thing? Press tab. Now type oh, your search. Okay. Now it'll search for anything. For example, type in shutdown. Look. Wait a sec before you see shutdown. Oh, okay. And you could shot actually well. see it tells you it, it <laughs> finds anything. Well. It even see shut down. Or if you if, shoot someone, did you shoot them well? Yeah, and see here's a well there's password in there, but if you try and type in that flip, there it is. Oh, okay. So everything can be found or fi your fox. But does. rather than pressing tab I wouldn't mind having that as a just a little feature down in the corner because I find that a very useful feature. And then when you feel that you know the system yeah. very well and you don't need it anymore, fine, delete it. Okay. Another thing that we couldn't possibly skip, Compiz Settings Manager. Now, if we go down to animations, you see this burn effect? Yes. This burn effect is for the drop down thing, okay? Yes, yes. So it says it takes oh, I zero pick, point. Yeah, no, no, I no I'll pick show you in a explode second. Explode and oh, show what's aeroplane? In a few seconds, you don't get too excited here. <laughs> now, you can change it, for example, you wouldn't want to change it this long, but that means it would take two seconds for the burn effect. So you can change the exact speed. This is Linux, it's ultra customized, so if I click applications now, oh. it's a lot slower. I see. So you can Whereas, what did you have it on? Like half a second. Half a second, yeah. Oh. Or you could have it really fast, like or two hundred, which would be point two of a second or a fifth of a second. So if you do it like this, oh, it's so fast you can barely actually see it. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> it's almost like exploding then. Yeah, and for example, let's say minimize. Say instead of magic lamp, which is that thing where it gets sucked in. Yeah. Let's say you wanted it to to aeroplane. Yeah. For example. Usually, sidekick is the way it opens. So, if it minimizes, it'll do that aeroplane. It doesn't let you close it. Is that normal? A few technical difficulties yeah, there. We, couldn't we, can't, close this. we can't seem to close so this. Just, so, so, this is a purpose for the desktop cube. Put if you, it on if you don't want side. something, put it over there and it can stay there. And if you, yeah, if something freezes, yeah. it can't do close, control. Just put it on yeah. the other side. <laughs> uh, are we on the right one now? Yeah, are there four to choose from? Yeah. Four desktops. Well, let's just go back. They're all the same, right? Except for the places where you've, you've put yeah. unclosable things. Okay, we just had a technical difficulty where we just couldn't close everything. But anyway, this is what, what we've done just to play around with the settings. Applications oh, does a random thing each time. <laughs> So you can go over all of these menus. One will do that. One will do that. One wow. does that, and one oh. does that. One does that. <laughs> <laughs> so it chooses a different effect every time. Okay, but a it seems to be one. yeah, choosing a lot of the same ones. Right. I, I should have sped up the speed it does this. But anyway, like when you open a pro, oh look at that. Um, when you open a program, I've set it to do that. And when you close it, it explodes. Was that exploding? Yeah. Okay. Did you not? Do you not call that exploding? Well, where's the smoke and the flames? And okay. Well, let's do a littler one. Oh, these effects. You don't want to do these effects in a certain way. But let's just, for example, open Task Manager. Do you like the way it opens it? By the way, how it did that nice blue effect? Yeah. And then close. That's exploding. Okay. Anyway, but there's a lot, a lot more effects. Now over here you've got wine. <laughs> this is, is insane. Now just for some reason the Windows 7 applications wouldn't run on this Cylon Linux, but on my mum's laptop which runs Cylon Linux very well. Look at this. The full on effects and everything. So if we go into wine, actually not into wine. If we go into computer, then go into her hard drive. Now, first of all, I'll just start off with a simple one. Max is Simmerth. Simmerth is 1991. And watch this. This is a 1991 Windows application, 16-bit. Okay, and watch what it can do. 
boom, here is a Windows application running on Linux. And it's actually working perfectly in everything. See? But it's really old, so it doesn't work that well. <laughs> but no, but it works. You can do everything. I'm just saying it looks bad. Like this Sim Earth is from 1991 and it does a window dragging and everything. Like it doesn't drag the whole window, it just shows like an outline. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, let's quit that. And see, that's an actual Windows application. See, with the. Even the look of Windows, the buttons and everything. You want to save the current world. Yes, we do want to save no. our current world. Just no. <laughs> okay. And then another example is a Windows stuff. If only saving the world was that easy, huh? Mm. Yes or no. <laughs> yeah. You can do the tree search if you want to save the world a bit. Well, it's not really saving the world. It's saving trees. But if there's no trees, the world would die off. System 32. Now, for example, it even does an icon. So, for example, Task Manager. Here is the Windows XP Task Manager running on Cylon Linux, and that is the Task Manager. You can see the processes, and there's no applications on Windows currently running, right? But let's run an, a Windows application. For example, Minesweeper. Just open that up, and boom, there's the Windows XP. Might you recognise that, don't you? Yeah, I do. And look what's actually happened. Even this Windows Task Manager has identified that Minesweeper's open. That Minesweep is open and it's even all in the taskbar and everything. <laughs> so you can run these Windows applications. SimEarth 9, that's 16-bit and everything. And this is you running. You know what? This is uniting Mac, Linux and, and Windows, Windows. Because in the you've one got system. the Macing dock, you got the Windows here, and it's a Linux operating system. It's a Linux system. operating system <laughs> that can run Windows programs. I wonder if there's a program like Wine runs Windows. I wonder yeah. if there's a program that can run Mac. I don't know. In fact, you could actually emulate. Oh, no, actually, I know you can run virtual Windows XP and stuff. That but could anyway, be another episode of some other thing. Maybe yeah. we'll find a Linux operating system that runs Windows and Mac by default. Yeah. Anyway, can you turn off that computer, not that one, because that one will crash. <laughs> first of all, I'm just going to close off all these things first. Now, what I've done is this was running, and I took the USB out of it. The operating system's still running even without the USB. See. Oh, wow, it is too. But if you turn it off, it will have errors. Oh, okay. Yeah, don't look at how I'm turning it off. Don't even look. Okay. It doesn't have it there. Oh, wait a sec. That looks like a familiar type of symbol. I wonder if that's it. Shut down. My CD drive just came out trying to shut this off. But no, out input output errors because I'd taken the USB out. <laughs> Okay, shut down. There we go, you did it. There so we go. So the reason this one had errors is because you took the, took USB, the USB from out. there. Yeah, from and there and put it, put it in. So the computer was yeah. still running and it kind of needs to look yeah. at the USB when yeah. it's turning off. But okay. yeah, that's how it's supposed to turn off. That's how it's not supposed to turn off. Well, let's just say I think it's a pretty good operating system. I don't have any problems with it. Yeah. Um, can't see any faults. And I tell you what, it's got some pretty neat features for somebody who likes to customise everything. If you were going to show off any Linux operating system to one of your friends... I'll show off this one. This was a really good one. This <laughs> You like it better than Linux Mint? Lots you like it better features. than Debian, Ubuntu, everything? I'd have to think about that, but in, in respect to features and little neat tricks... Eye and, candy, it's called. Eye candy, okay. Yep, eye candy is lots of effects on the screen that look really okay. cool. Okay, in respect to effects on the screen, this one has it all. Is it... Your favourite operating system or what? Oh, look, after testing so many operating systems, there are some good ones, there are bad ones, and there are ones in the middle. This is one of the good ones. This is one of the good ones? One of the really good ones. Now I'm going to give you two tests. Yes. Is it better than Mac OS 10.08, or well, Mountain Lion, the latest? Well, it's definitely got a lot of more features, and it looks pretty... Well, it's definitely more customisable. Yeah. Remember, Mac me, has that big Mac dock. And, yeah. yeah, yeah, well, it's, it's got a bit of Mac in it anyway. Yeah. And to me, it looks pretty compatible. I mean, you had Windows up there too. Remember, it doesn't run every Windows program. Yes. There might be a few errors, but yes. you can still customise it too. Um, but by default, it can do that. So yes. that was pretty good. Is it better than Windows XP? In looks, function and everything? Oh, in looks and... Uh, I, I even think it's more intuitive. Okay. Mm. So Windows XP does not have the best interface. No, but I already said that I I would update it to Windows Vista and then Windows 7. 
And so, okay, and the last so this test in comparison to, to Windows Seven. Oh. Do you need a little reminder of what Windows Seven looks no, no, like? No, no, no. I know what it looks like, but I'm just. It's like a of, glass bottom. The icons yeah. in the taskbar. The I'm start thinking menu. of compatibility wise. With things that I need to use on a daily basis, Windows 7... You can run documents and stuff yeah, with look, this. W Windows 7 for me would definitely be more practical because I'd know 100% it would be compatible with everything. However, if I was in a mood where I wanted to be totally customizing everything and if you this, wanted a bunch of free applications windows 7 you don't get all this yeah, stuff for free office this. you'd have to pay 300 dollars this it's free well with, with my current needs at the moment windows 7 takes care of it perfectly yeah. but if i wanted to be more customizable and get all these extra little free downloads fine this would have it all but i didn't have a problem finding things on this one this is very intuitive and it has a search thing as well out of the box comes mm. with all these features you don't have to install them so and you can delete things that you don't need so you don't like minimalist operating systems no. one where it comes with nothing you like something like this where everything you need is there it's ready there, for you and if why go out you and don't get, yeah. need because you simply want to you know get rid of the, the things you don't need because you want your operating system yeah. to say run more quickly or whatever then fine, start deleting the things you don't need. I like it. I don't have a bad thing to say about this one. This one's one of the good. And I've noticed you love the software centre. Yes. How it's an easy way. Instead of looking online, finding it, then clicking download, and finding where it downloads to, installing it, and then yeah. doing all that, you just click, you find the application, click install, and that's it. And it puts it in the right yes. spot in the start menu, you know everything. Yes. You can't do that in Windows 7, but you can kind of do that in Windows 8. Does that change your opinion of Windows 8? Knowing well, that it's got an app store. Well, look at it this way. You have been driving me absolutely insane talking about this Surface thing. Surface Pro. Surface Pro, you've been driving me bonkers. Now, finally today, we have ordered it. Yeah. And it's going to be here... In within, two weeks. Well, within two weeks. Within, yeah. Which means the next thing I might be trying out would be Windows 8. On a Surface Pro. On a Surface Pro. With touch screen and everything. So let's see how I like it. Okay, well, that's a good thing. Let's see. <laughs> Do you like Windows 8 better than Windows 7? Maybe Microsoft <laughs> got it right in where it's supposed to be run on, on a tablet. We'll see. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.